When you see a healthcare professional, you expect the medication you're getting is safe. But what if it isn't? A deadly fungal meningitis outbreak killed 64 people and infected nearly 800 others in 2012. And a New England compounding pharmacy is said to be to blame. But it doesn't stop there. 68 people are blinded from a faulty compounded eye injection in Dallas. 41 people are infected with septic arthritis from bacterial contamination in New Jersey. 17 New York cancer patients develop fungal infections and two lose their lives. Compound pharmacy errors have been linked to 114 deaths and more than 1,400 cases of infection or injury between 2001 and 2017, leaving many asking, how is this happening? And am I safe? Nearly 40 million prescriptions are compounded in the U.S. every year. More than 7,500 compounding pharmacies exist here. Physician and biochemist Dr. Dina Grayson is joining us now via Skype. She says there's not enough oversight of compounding pharmacies. And, and Dr. Grayson, I would just ask you, why, why do you think some of these pharmacies might be falling through the cracks? The reality is, is that there's just not the appropriate oversight of these pharmacies. And they're being driven by greed. They're putting profits over patient safety. I think that for the most part, that pharmacies try to do a really good job for their patients and providing high quality products that are safe and effective. But unfortunately, the reality is, is when you only have a couple of bad apples, those bad apples can lead to many patients dying or having life-threatening uh, uh, injuries. And some of these injuries are long-term, such as paralysis. I see the problem a lot is that the regulation varies so much state to state. That's uh, it right. seems like, that is exactly and I right. want your opinion on this. What is your read? What's the, what's the, what direction do we need to go to, to get better control of this industry? answer is simple. We need to have federal regulations here. And we could potentially look at this and say, look, we're going to take, we're going to apply those federal regulations to high risk products, meaning those that are going to be injected into some, you know, into the patient, whether that be the eye, the central nervous system, a joint or what have you. I think that's a good point. And so we're joined now by compounding pharmacist, Mike Pavlovich in the audience. Uh, obviously we're, we're talking about some of the misdeeds, if you will, I'll let you have the floor just in terms of the things that you think compounding pharmacies do right. Well, I think we solve problems. Uh, there are a lot of unique patients out there with issues that can't be solved by a commercial medication. So working with the physician, we have to derive a formula or a formulation to uh, help address a specific problem. Um, I, I take a little bit of issue with the, with the need for more oversight uh, as uh, a compounding pharmacist that um, has a sterile operation as well. Uh, we were visited three months after our sterile license was granted uh, by the FDA, and it was a very thorough investigation with very little um, result. What I'm hearing from uh, you is your pharmacy itself, decent amount of regulation. Yeah. You've, you've been searched and made, made, making sure everything is, is sterile. But back to Dr. Grayson, I think my concern is the lack of consistency across the board. Yes. But what I would love to see is more uniformity. And I don't know how we get there, Dr. Grayson. You know, what would you recommend? How should we hold accountable these few bad apples? Because I think everyone here agrees that by and large, most, most of these compounding pharmacies are, are doing a good job. The FDA is quite good at having an open period of comment to allow compounding pharmacists to provide commentary and input into their guidelines. I develop medicines in biotechnology, and those guidelines are actually quite helpful. And again, I understand that for our, you know, our colleague here today, he's an ethical, a good compounding pharmacist, and he's passed with flying colors the inspections. Um, and regulations, unfortunately, do create more work for folks. But on the other hand, we just have too many incidences of patients being harmed by some bad actors. And that just begs for some federal oversight. 